Hey, how's it going? It's Nick Casco. This is going to be a video on grafting fruit trees for beginners. I've always wanted to have a video or a series of videos that covers everything from beginning to end for somebody that has never grafted before, for all the beginners out there. So this is going to be one of those. Uh, I'll probably split it up into a few videos, uh, make it into a series. So if you want to follow along, you can like and subscribe and the videos will keep coming. So the first step in grafting is collecting and storing budwood. The reason why you want to collect and store it is because the optimal time to graft is when the tree has broken dormancy, but the wood itself is still dormant. And the only way to achieve that is to store the wood in a refrigerator or someplace cold to keep it from leafing out. And then once the root system where you want to graft onto has broken dormancy, all the sap is flowing, then you, pl you place this dormant budwood and attach it to that rootstock. It begins to grow instantly, but it doesn't dry out because it has no leaves on it yet. So it gives it some time to callus and heal before it starts growing. So the best time to collect the budwood is uh, as late as possible in the winter, but before it leaps out but it can be collected anytime during the winter. Uh, they will store for over six months if you store them correctly. I will show exactly how I store these and how I collect them. So this is a Spitzenberg apple tree here. If I wanna have another Spitzenberg or another couple Spitzenberg apples that are exact clones of this variety, what I need to do is take cuttings from this tree and graft onto any other rootstock to produce a clone of this tree. So you want any growth that's only previous season growth, uh, any vigorous growth, growth near the top. Uh, it could be near the bottom as long as it's all, it's vigorous and it's healthy. So I'll go in here and I'll try to pick out uh, pieces that I will be pruning out anyway to take for budwood. This piece, for example, is growing in towards the tree. It's going to have to get cut out anyway. It's one season of growth here. So I'll take that. This piece is about three feet long. And you can do a lot of grafting with this. If I really wanted to make this last, I could make a tree out of every single bud. So every single bud that's here could produce a clone of this exact variety, which is the Spitzenberg. But that's if you do uh, bud grafting. I normally uh, use scions that are about 10 to eight inches long. They store easily. So I cut them up into sections that are about eight to 10 inches long. Uh, the tips you can use, but oftentimes, depending on how cold hardy a variety is and what um, cultivar, what kind of fruit it is, some, sometimes these tips will be dried out. And I can take a couple more, anything near the top will work. Again, um, I'll remove a small piece from the bottom because it's slightly curved. I want the scions to be close to pencil thick and it could range, you know, anywhere from thicker to thinner. Uh, you can use even thicker wood if you want, but thicker wood is harder to cut when you make the grafts. So here's a tip here again. This, this, this is usable actually, but when you have better wood, there's no reason to uh, keep or hang on to uh, sections that aren't so good. You want the science to be as healthy as possible, as juicy as possible, anywhere from the vigorous 
growth of the tree. Here's an example of an older cherry tree. It's not doing so well. But if somebody wanted to save this variety because it was a good producer in the past, um, scion wood is kind of difficult to get to because you have to climb the tree to get it. All these lower branches are dying off. There's no growth near the bottom. So you can't just take one of these, cut it off and call it good. What do we really have here? I mean, this is just flower buds and really no other vegetative buds to be found. So this won't work. You want vegetative buds for scion wood. So what you need to do is climb this tree and find some kind of growth from the previous season. Climbed up the tree a little ways and found some budwood. Anything that has single buds on it is usually previous season's growth. And you can see where the node is there where it stopped growing last season. You don't want to collect budwood anywhere past that. Any older wood, even though it's just as thin will have flower buds on it you don't want these for grafting this stick would not be any good as a scion wood this one however is just perfect and then there's another one right here that i found all these are vegetative buds these will do good as scion wood For peaches, you have to pay particular attention to the scion wood you select because peaches will fruit on previous season's growth and they'll have a lot of flower buds on them. Like over here, they'll have two flower buds and a vegetative bud. These can be used, but they're not ideal. If you have nothing else, you can take scions that look like this. But for peaches, what you're really looking for is stuff with single buds like this single pointy buds vegetative buds is what you want so here's an example of a vegetative bud here's one bud but this is a flower bud so what you really want is sections with buds that look like this for peaches here's a pear tree here and you can see down here there really isn't any wood for grafting. These are all flower buds. Up here, there's one piece. This could get used. This can get used. Single buds. Um, if you go below that, from here downward is two year wood. Here's, here's a nice one way down here. So previous season's growth is what you're looking for and single buds. If you have multiple buds at each node, it's likely to be flower buds and then that's not what you want for grafting. Make sure your refrigerator is set to the coldest temperature that is just above freezing. The colder it is, the better, but as long as it's not freezing. That way it'll keep the scion wood pressure and less chances of mold growing. I keep my wood in Ziplocs like this. Uh, the Ziplocs are labeled with uh, the type of tree. And then inside each Ziploc, each type of tree is labeled with the variety. So these are cherries. This is Bing. You want to harvest your wood when it's dry. And when you put it in a Ziploc, you really don't want a lot of moisture in the Ziploc. You just want to maintain the humidity in there at 100. So I throw, throw in some hemlock branches. Uh, people like to throw in damp paper towels. I've learned that uh, paper towels uh, attract a lot of mold 
and but if you do end up using paper towels just make sure that they're barely damp and put them in the corner of the Ziploc bags just to help maintain the humidity if you're scared that your cyanwood wood will dry out but honestly you really don't need paper towels or anything in there if you have plenty of wood in the bag as soon as this is sealed the humidity in the bag will get up to 100 percent and if no moisture is escaping the bag there's no way the cyanwood wood can dry out i like to add just a little bit of branches of the evergreen hemlock and they're just to kind of help pat it a little bit and also inhibit mold and control the climate in the bag a little bit and you just want to make sure it's sealed take as much air out of it as possible and really you just throw it in the refrigerator and wait until your fruit trees break dormancy so you can start grafting 